Powerful Nerdcast Assemble! Stay dandy, baby. At the beginning of Attack on Titan, Aaron Yeager was the lovable little asshole who wanted to save the world from giant man-eating monsters. Now, here we are in the present storyline of the final season of Attack on Titan, and Aaron is now a big lovable asshole who simply just wants to kill everyone, in particular the race of his very own people, the Eldians. That's right, the big euthanasia plan is coming to fruition in the final season of Attack on Titan, which is not actually the final season at all. We got the big announcement that apparently we're going to get some more anime material coming in 2022. And after you see the end, the final episode of this season, you're going to wish it was happening a lot sooner because, man, that was one hell of a cliffhanger. As someone who only watches the anime version of Attack on Titan, I can honestly say that the wait for this show is going to be excruciating. That being said, this season right here I really think was something special. Some of the best animated television that I've seen in quite some time, and it has completely subverted my expectations of what Attack on Titan is as an anime series. I mean, I go back and I look at my memories of watching the first couple of seasons, and I get a completely different vibe from that to what I'm actually watching now. This season right here was one of the most emotionally draining things that I have ever seen. And the final four episodes, which are what I'm going to be talking about today, just absolutely blew me away in terms of their content and their storytelling. And it's giving me such a completely different feeling than the feelings I had when I was watching the original show, which again, mostly was just a no-holds-barred, action-packed, awesome show about people with crazy Spider-Man gear flying around and fighting against giant man-eating zombie monsters. Now, the monsters themselves truly are the humans themselves, and just like real life, they just can't learn from their past. Violence begets violence, revenge begets revenge, Everything is this vicious cycle which manages to continue. But it's the characters themselves which have been one of the strongest elements of Attack on Titan. They truly come to the forefront of this season. And you really get to see how much they've changed. Or maybe, as the series tries to imply with the character of Eren, maybe they haven't really changed at all. They've just matured as the characters they have always been. So, I'm going to be talking about the final four episodes of the season, so my thoughts are probably going to be all over the place. I just want to talk about some of the major events which are leading to the big finale of this season, and where we're possibly going to go from here. But, it's safe to say, a lot of real crazy shit is going on in these episodes, so let's go ahead and start from the beginning. So, Zeke is being looked after by Levi, and these two characters are fucking oil and water. They just never get together at all. They can never see eye to eye on anything, and if it were up to Levi... Basically, he would just chop his head off, but he can't risk losing that power, and he doesn't want this power to end up going to Eren at all, who is now basically AWOL, and now has a giant devoted group of soldiers known as the Jaegerists who are trying to follow him and all of his plans. They also plan on eventually taking over the entire parody military, and that all eventually does end up happening with this massive convoluted plan which has actually been cooked up by both Aaron and Zeke. We actually get to see that when they were uh, back in Liberio, they actually like met each other, which was really strange, and strangely enough, Aaron actually ends up sympathizing with Zeke and his backstory, which we'll talk about in just a second, but basically Zeke has this crazy plan which is going to involve euthanizing all of the Eldians, which is to say they're going to kill all of them. That's like kind of the big plan, but first they're going to have to take over the military, and the way that they're going to do that is that they're going to trick all of the higher-ups in the military and all of the soldiers, especially the ones that are with Levi, into drinking his spinal fluid, which they have put in these wine bottles, and they're calling it wine. And over time, they've all been drinking it, and the reason that this is bad is because when these spinal fluids are inside of someone, Zeke essentially is able to use his powers to transform all of them the Titans. Essentially, he's got a grip on just about everyone at this point, and it is a horrifying prospect to say the least, but it's the build-up to that moment that's great. It's like waiting for that bomb to go off when you know things are going to get insane. But most of these episodes are actually dedicated more so to the drama of the series, which I think has reached 
fever levels in this season. Like, it is just so freaking insane the way that they actually do it, all of it. And uh, the, the first episode I want to talk about mostly involves the character of Niccolo and him being reunited with the, uh, the other uh, Marleyan candidates, Gabby and Falco. So... This is a double whammy of an episode for a number of reasons. One, it's just so devastating to see how far these characters have come in terms of how far they're willing to go for their revenge. And the fact that there is one major character death that has just been sort of lingering over this entire season, and it's been other than Sasha. And getting to see her family get over her death and be involved with the people who are directly responsible for it was emotional enough. But then there's Niccolo, a character who basically fell in love with her character and was able to look past his deep-seated hatred that's been bulleted into his freaking brain since he was a young child, that Eldians are evil. He, it changed him as a character. It made him more human. And after her death, things were just never quite the same. And there's this scene where Sasha's family is going to Niccolo to have this amazing meal. Gabby and Falco are going to go with them, and they end up trying to meet with Niccolo. And this does not go well at all. I initially thought that things were just going to work out, but when Niccolo realizes that Gabby is the one who actually killed Sasha, dude just fucking loses his mind. He takes a wine bottle, tries to smash it into her face. Falco ends up taking it, and what's even more dangerous is that this is one of those wine bottles that actually had Zeke's spinal fluid in it, and he ends up getting some of it into his mouth, so essentially he has ingested those spinal fluids, basically making him to susceptible to being transformed into a pure titan form. It's really freaking messed here. And then it gets even crazier when Niccolo decides to bring both of these people up to Sasha's family, revealing that they're the ones who are responsible for Sasha's death, and if Sasha's father isn't going to do anything about it, Niccolo is just going to kill them right there on the spot. Luckily, Hanji, Armin, and the other soldiers are there to try and put a stop to all of these events. But it's actually Sasha's father who ends up stopping all of this, taking the knife away from Niccolo and reminding him that while these are the people that were responsible for killing her, they really shouldn't be blamed for any of it. To him, Sasha is just a hunter who went into the woods and got a little lost. He's able to look past this and his hatred for these people and turn it into a way more human moment but then you have that one girl that was saved by Sasha in the past who decides that, no, she's going to try and fucking kill Gabby. She ends up getting stopped, and the entire episode just stopped in its tracks right there. And it's so devastating to see Niccolo, this character, go through all of these, like, weird moments of being accepting of these people, of being angry at them, of constantly going back and forth, and also knowing the truth about these wine bottles that might actually have Zeke's spinal fluid in it. The entire episode is just an absolute roller coaster of madness. It's insane. It's basically the fuse which is slowly making its way to the dynamite, and that dynamite starts to take its form in the form of the actual Jaegerists, who just decide to appear in this episode, and they're planning to take control of the military themselves, all in the name of Aaron frickin' Jaeger, who also makes his grand reappearance here and has what might be one of the most tense conversations that he's ever had with his two friends, Mikasa and Armin. So that leads us to the next episode of the series where things just get even crazier. And again, another episode which just made me howl with anger, but also I just couldn't turn away from the screen when I was actually seeing it. This is an important moment because you've felt this boiling up emotion from Armin and Aaron every single time they've been around each other this season. And it finally comes to a head here, where Armin tries to confront him about what he's been doing and how it's truly wrong in the first place, but Aaron's just not hearing any of this. He's truly a man on a mission, and it leads to what I think might be an even more heartbreaking scene than the death of Sasha, which is the end of a potential friendship and maybe even love interest. Most of that comes from Mikasa, but there's a scene where Armin basically gets really pissed at Eren for him just being really pig-headed and stupid, tries to deck him in the face, and then Mikasa ends up stopping him. And this is because we get the revelation that apparently Mikasa being an Ackerman has basically been trained to always fight and to defend against people, and... This is something that has always, apparently with Aaron, not sat well. And this is where we get to learn a little bit more about their relationship, and I don't know what to take from it here, but basically Aaron admits that he's always hated Mikasa. And that's because he's always seen her as, like, a slave. As someone who doesn't have any particular free will. She was created to be something else. And the fact that she's so easily susceptible to utilizing her skills as basically just a straight-up soldier absolutely disgusts him and he even goes as far as to say that he's always hated her and I don't know what to believe at this moment but seeing Mikasa 
actually hear this and seeing her reaction to this is just devastating. The relationship between Eren and Mikasa has always been one of the backbones of the entire series, and it's been debated on whether there is, like, a sibling thing between them or if Mikasa actually loves him. It's kind of hard to say, and honestly, it could be interchangeable depending on the viewer. It's really up to interpretation. But you can basically tell that in this moment, her entire world is absolutely shattered in this moment. And yet, she still manages to have no control over everything that's going on here. Armin ends up getting the shit kicked out of him by Eren, and he's going to take them back to where it all began so they can begin the next portion of their plan. So, after all this emotional bullshit, after all this crazy stuff happening, of watching these characters go through the most massive changes that we've seen, we finally get some pretty classic action. And again, it's another big rematch between Zeke and Levi. Levi realizes that Zeke is probably going to escape, and he wants to do everything in his power to not make this happen, and Zeke just outright decides that he's going to start running away, but he realizes that all of the soldiers have ingested his spinal fluid, so he decides to use his power to transform them into titans. This don't mean shit against Levi. This guy fucking kills titans for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's not a big thing for him. He does it all the time. And I guess Zeke felt that since they're his comrades, he's not going to do it. And he had no problem in taking these guys down. And we get this really epic rematch between the two characters. And it is some solid stuff here. And you can just feel the relief on Levi knowing that he finally can just go all out against Zeke and take him down. And he does end up doing that by quite literally blowing up him up and when he's inside of the Beast Titan form and he takes his body out. And then he ends up just putting him on a cart and taking one of these giant thunder spears, slamming it into his stomach, and then tying it to a rope around his neck so that if Zeke ever moves his neck too much, basically he's just going to explode. This is metal. It's so freaking awesome that he's willing to do something that insane in order to contain this guy. And you can just feel the absolute devastation for Zeke as well. Especially when Levi starts torturing him by cutting off his feet in the most brutal fashion possible. Knowing that he's going to have to continue to do this, lest of course he tries to escape or transform into one of his titan forms. And he can't risk doing that too much because if he moves too much, boom, his body is just going to freaking explode. This is all insane, and it leads to the next portion of the episode where we finally get Zeke's backstory, and this is something that has been a long time coming. We've already known the smaller details about the fact that he betrayed his parents by actually turning them over to the military, which has led to the, the most major events of the series here. But now we finally get to see what sort of led up to this and how he sort of ended up presenting his family and why that is, and that's because he ended up meeting this other officer in the Marleyan military who is this guy who goes by the the name of Kasaver, and Kasaver was one of the original users of the Beast Titan form, and he was the previous user before he ended up giving it to Zeke, and Kasaver ended up being sort of like the father figure to Zeke, and sort of like telling him how he should, uh, you know, turn in his parents, because if he does so, it might actually end up sparing him as well as his grandparents as well. Not to mention, Kasaver is also sort of like grooming Zeke to basically like be the next inheritor of his powers as well as his ideals, realizing that the best way to take out all of these people is just going to be straight up euthanasia. That's his plan. They're going to try and take out all of the Eldians with the power of the Beast Titan and the Founding Titan. And we also get to see that this is, uh, you know, thematically cool because this is also where he gets his glasses. He inherited his abilities, his ideals, and his very own look. Essentially, Zeke is like the next generation Kasaver. And I am sort of skimming through some of the major details here, but it's a big moment to see that there was this character in Zeke's life that he saw as more of a father figure than Grisha was. A lot of this resentment that Zeke had towards his parents came from the fact that they were simply trying to use him for their way of like overthrowing everyone in Marley and trying to bring the Eldians back to power and he was completely against this. He never got to have like a true childhood or like a parent relationship with anyone. Kasaver is the one who actually came in and ended up doing all of this and you can see that this dramatically changed him as a character to the point where at the end of this episode he realizes that there's nothing left and he decides that he's just going to allow himself to get killed and he basically ends up pulling his neck which causes a massive explosion sending his practically destroyed body far off and Levi who explodes into another direction and we don't know if he's alive or if he's dead but the fact of the matter is come on 
Levi's alive. Nothing's going to kill this guy that freaking easily. And basically, the episode ends with a lot of ambiguity. And then we get to the final episode of the season, where, again, they're basically just setting up more of the major conflicts which are going to be happening later. As for Zeke and Levi, we don't get to see what happens to Levi, but we do get to see what happens to Zeke. There's this weird moment where, like, half of his body is completely gone, and it looks like he's about to pass away when suddenly he has a vision of this young woman in his mind. I don't know who this character is. I have two guesses here. This is either another one of the previous people who had the power of the Beast Titan. Like, maybe that's, like, what he's actually seeing, like, another version of someone who used this power even before Kasaver. Or this could be the fabled Ymir Fritz. It's really hard to say because it happens so fast and you just can't even tell. And then we get this weird-ass scene when suddenly another, like, pure titan runs up to him, ends up ripping its stomach open, taking Zeke and putting it inside of him. And I don't know what the hell this is supposed to mean. I don't know if this has something to do with his power to control titans, if someone else is trying to make this happen. The implication is that Zeke is going to live, however, which, when Levi hears about this... Man, I don't even want to be in the same room when he figures this shit out. And then we finally move to the next part of the episode where things just get insane again, where we get to see that the Jaegerists have essentially taken control of the military, the higher-ups, including Pixis and all of his guys. All of these people which have consumed the spinal fluid wine have been designated with sashes around their arms, all of which are different color to designate what they're going to be, such as people who are white who are along with the Jaegerists. Uh, I think there's red for people who know it's going to happen, but they're just going to follow along anyway. And then there's people like Pixis who are like, fuck you guys. You're just a bunch of friggin' assholes and I want nothing to do with you. The Jaegerists, along with Yelena, have basically manipulated the entire military to be a part of their group as they plan for their eventual attack. But of course, they're all in on the plan of Zeke and Eren, which is to basically just euthanize all of the Eldians. Even Yelena ends up explaining this to all of the captured soldiers, Mikasa, Armin, and uh, Jean, and all the others. It's, it's a really messed up moment, especially when Armin gets gets like really choked up about this saying that it's like such a noble cause i don't know what his deal is maybe him getting his clock cleaned by aaron had something to do with it but it's a very freaky scene even with the character of greece who ends up getting up in nicolo's face uh basically saying a lot of racist bullshit about sasha which ends up getting him killed by yelena which is again just another big shocking moment but then we have the final part of the episode where it looks like that aaron is going to finally talk to gabby and i was really waiting for this moment i thought it was going to end up being something really crazy and then peak just decides to show up. You remember when she infiltrated the place a couple of episodes ago? Well, her story finally comes to the forefront in a nice shocking twist. It looks like she actually ends up wanting to join Aaron and his group, actually wanting to get revenge against Marley as well. That is until the end of the episode where we learn that this is actually a front, this is a trick, in order to lure Aaron to the top of this building where he is going to try and be devoured by Galliard, who shows up with a jaw titan, trying to devour him. That doesn't end up working. Aaron transforms, but this is all a part of an even bigger plan to lead Marley to his location. And the episode actually ends with Aaron transformed into his titan form as a bunch of blimps and airships make their way into the island preparing to go to war with Aaron himself and you get to see that Reiner is a part of this and these these shots they have of these close-ups of Reiner and Aaron's face you can just feel the conflict building up to this moment this amazing reunion between these characters which was only slightly teased at the beginning of the season and now the big rematch the final battle the final war for humanity itself is about to take place and damn it it's not going to happen in this season we gotta wait for the next one holy fucking shit so what's the rundown on the final four episodes of the final season of attack on titan this was exhausting. This was so emotionally draining. By the time I got done watching these episodes, I didn't even know what to think. I just had to like sit down and process everything that I just saw because there was just so much shit going on. And again, I still think the biggest shock about this entire season is all about Aaron Yeager, a character who started out as a potential hero and is effectively transformed into the main villain of the series. And even then, I don't even know if I can call him a villain. I'm still not quite sure who I should be rooting for. At this point, I'm just watching on the sidelines to see what sort of chaos is eventually going to ensue. Aaron is one of the most interesting protagonists that I have ever seen, though, to say the least. And I, I find it hard to believe that he's always been this character. Like, I mean, you go back and you watch the original seasons. There's definitely something different about his character. Some sort of switch was flipped in his mind, which transformed him into a completely different type of character. And 
I don't know how it happened. It, it could have been at the end of the season before this when he realized the truth about the world and his father's history and that there was a whole other world on the other side of the ocean. This could have been the moment that changed him forever, but it's so drastic to the point where he's almost a completely different character that I don't know if there's some sort of other ulterior motive here. I mean, his original plan, it seemed, was to let the Eldians live on, and now he simply just wants to kill all of them. He, he's been driven and pushed by so many different people, but he's formed his brand new plan through meeting his brother, and it's just, I can't even process it right now. The only character who seems to make any sort of logical sense in the show is Armin, a character who desperately tries to get through to Eren in almost every single scene that he's in, but this is where their entire relationship came to a front, and it felt so painful seeing them fight each other and have to actually throw fists. It was really terrible. It was like watching two best friends fight each other. I mean, that's exactly what it was, but it felt so raw and so real at the same time, and yet... I still feel that Aaron is pulling his punches. I feel like there's something else that we don't quite know yet. I don't know. If Aaron does end up becoming like one of the major antagonists of the series, I have to say that it's one of the most interesting developments that I've seen in just about any anime series, period. And it really has a lot of balls with what it's actually trying to do. Again, though, as it stands, it's kind of hard to know who actually to root for here. I mean, I sympathize with a lot of the characters. I sympathize with Gabby and with Falco. I sympathize with Aaron and Armin and Mikasa. I don't know who to root for. I just want to see this series end with at least a little bit of hot promise and some hope to show that not everything is simply going to be lost to the acts of revenge and that people can learn from these things. Unfortunately, it is disturbingly close to real life, where, honestly, for thousands of years, we simply haven't learned anything. We keep making the same mistakes over and over again. Even when we're presented with evidence that allows us to overcome these type of obstacles, we keep being foolish. We keep on drinking that spinal fluid wine, and it's getting us drunk. Attack on Titan goes for this endless cycle of hatred type storyline that I've seen in so many other anime series, but it's done so elegantly here in the way that it was actually built up and shown that really I think it's nothing short of fantastic. A lot of people can say that Attack on Titan is overrated. It came out at a time where it became really popular and, and, and just it's just the, the hot anime at the moment, but I think this season has proven that there's a lot more to the show than just flashy action scenes and giant monsters. It's the characters, it's their relationships, it's their growth, and it's how it's all going to end, which who knows? A year from now, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. I really hope it is going to eventually live up to the hype. As for me, I'm going to continue to stick with the anime version. I'm going to wait for the next season, and I'm going to try and avoid spoilers like the freaking plague, because I don't know what's going to happen next, but man, I'm ready. I also want to address the fact, again, that this season was done by a different animation studio, MAPPA, and I think they did a fantastic job with the season. It still manages to feel like it fits in line with the previous seasons of the show, and yes, there is a little bit more use of CG in terms of the action scenes, the Titans themselves, but it never managed to take me out of the moment, and all of the big action set pieces all still managed to be really explosive and awesome and still in line with everything that I've seen previous in the show. But this was definitely a more dramatic season in terms of how it was going to use its storytelling. There wasn't as much action as I was expecting there to be, but it looks really solid every single time. The character design is just as distinctive as that has always been. And uh, even the opening, which initially I hated, has grown on me so much. It's such a bold intro too, because you don't even get to see like any of the main characters. It's just a bunch of really weird colors and explosions and war scene imagery set to a song which is just hauntingly hypnotic. And I think it really sort of encapsulates what this entire season is all about overall. It subverts our expectations. And a lot of times that whole subverting your expectation things can backfire. It can't work. It can be a crutch to show that something that is bad might actually be good. Here, I think it's just a lot of good, baby. And it's definitely worth your time. Attack on Titan, final season. I really enjoyed it. It's not really over, though, so I can't wait to see what's going to be happening next. I could fault the final episode for ending on such a big cliffhanger without any sort of finality, but man, it's going to be a great hook to get people excited to see what's going to happen next in the hopefully real conclusion of the series. So I'm excited for all that. Uh, this review was all over the place. It was insane, but I had to at least give my final thoughts on this season and these episodes and all the craziness within. Most importantly... 
I want to hear from you guys, though. What did you think about this season of Attack on Titan? Everything that's going on story-wise, character-wise. What do you hope to see from the real final conclusion to the story? Is Eren truly the villain? Does he have another plan? Does he really hate Mikasa? What do you want to see from the big final season? The real one of Attack on Titan. Let's discuss all that stuff. Comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. If you did like this review, turn into a Titan yourself and slam that fist right down on that like button. Helps out these videos tremendously. I would also like to take this time to thank all of my patrons. You guys are the super Titans of Ace Guru making those monthly donations. Remember, first time donators, I'll review an anime series of your choice as well as add your name to this list of amazing people that you currently see on screen. The super Titans of Ace Guru. So thank you guys so much for watching this review. I'll see you all next time. And as always, stay damn there. Baby.